The first week of August hangs at the very top of summer, the top of the live long year, like the highest seat of a ferris wheel when it pauses in its turning. It is curiously silent too, with blank white dawns and glaring noons and sunsets smeared with too much color. Often at night there is lightning, but it quivers all alone. There is no thunder, no relieving rain. These are strange and breathless days, the dog days, when people are led to do things they are sure to be sorry for after. This is the introduction to Tuck Everlasting. Natalie Babbitt, the author that I used as my mentor, was born and raised in rural Ohio and is a children's author. She dedicated her life to writing children's novels. She only has one book written for adults which she says is one of her favorites. She says, the world looks at us in a puzzled way and wonders why devote your life to writing for a group that has no money, no experience, and can't spell rhinoceros. Such writing can't be serious. The three books that I looked at this quarter were Nellie, A Cat on Her Own, The Search for Delicious, and Tuck Everlasting, which was the first book that I discovered by Natalie Babbitt. It has been made into a Broadway musical and a movie, and is probably one of her most popular stories. That Tuck Everlasting prologue is one of my favorites, and was what got me into Natalie Babbitt's writing. The way that the prologue reads is full of symbolism and tangible descriptions, so I can see why Babbitt says, I think I'm best at writing description, probably. That's what I like to write the best. And when asked how she would describe her writing, she said, Wordy. I enjoy descriptions. I like words, and words are the tools that writers use, just like paint is the tool that artists use. I think words are fun, and I have a lot of fun using them. Natalie Babbitt also was an illustrator before she started writing books in her 30s, so this plays an integral role in how she approaches descriptions and children's stories as a genre. Her attention to detail, particularly detail in nature, is astonishing. Because she was an illustrator, it makes sense that she wrote children's picture books. Nellie, a cat on her own, is a very melancholic story that she wrote about loneliness and independence. At the climax, Nellie fe felt a stirring in her wooden limbs, and she stood up tall in the old woman's hat and stepped out over the brim. Is it magic? whispered Nellie and Big Tom answered, moonshine mostly. This is how Babbitt's writing reads, sort of like magic, but really she just captures and dances in the truthful and beautiful moonshine. In an interview with Scholastic, she shares about her process of writing. She says the search for delicious was one of the most surprising books. In this interview, and the interviewer asked, when you first started writing, did you have any doubts you could do it? And she said, yes. The first two books that I did by myself were long stories in verse. I knew I could do that because I'd written a lot in verse. But verse stories are hard to sell, so my editor encouraged me to try writing in prose. And I thought, okay, and I wrote a little picture book story. And it kept growing and growing, and before I knew it, I had created The Search for Delicious. When it was finished, I couldn't believe I had done it, and I'm not sure I could do it again today. Her descriptions in The Search for Delicious are also quite beautiful and really grounded in the forest. There was a lovely greenish glow in the forest, a glow pierced everywhere by tree trunks like fingers thrust into an aquarium full of tinted water, and Galen slipped between them like a small fish. The simile in this quote caught my eye in particular. The morning's holiday mood was gone, and in its place was a vague uneasiness, like the feeling you get when you run down the road to overtake a friend and find when he turns to meet you, that it isn't a friend at all, but a stranger. This is a style I often use myself when writing for children, or in the voice of a child. In my story, Four Years of Silence, I wrote in a similar syntax. The loud bonging, it was a sound that was so regular and familiar, like the prayers Jonah said with his mum and pa before he'd go to bed, or like the taste of a Jaffa cake, especially when you get to the middle and taste the pleasant orange. The bell was like that. It was expected, even though he didn't know it was coming. In one of her essays on writing for children entitled Happy Endings, of course, and also Joy, she says that there is not much difference between a book for a child and one for adult. But she claims, it seems to me that there is one tangible difference between children's and adult literature. 
It does not work for every children's story, but perhaps it does apply to all that we remember longest and loved best. I am referring, of course, to the happy ending. But her stories also carry deep melancholy. She balances this brilliantly, realistically, hopefully, and necessarily. She doesn't deny the dark, she simply reaffirms the light. Facing the unfaceable, she calls it. This is why Tuck deals with death, Cat with abandonment and helplessness, and Delicious with quarrelsomeness. But all three, those deeply serious and melancholy, carry with them a necessary tone of hope, which both children and adults need. This is what I want to carry on in my writing of stories, this tone of hope that we all need. She states most truthfully on the nature and necessity of stories. In these terrible days of uncertainty and fear, not just for our own individual lives, but of the life of our lovely, lonely planet, we need our fantasies more than ever, especially our fantasies of hope.